Hello and welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. My name is Saiken and we're playing a Rigor on the Heart a version of this game. Last time we've uh, covered the ground basics of Shadowrun. <clears throat> this time we finally arrive at our uh, first location at the hub where all of the magic is going to happen this year, uh, the Shadows of Hong Kong. And we're going. We're on our way to meet our new Mrs. Johnson, who is going to help us. But before we go there, um, let's spend some karma that we've gotten from our last run, shall we? So by doing uh, that, you can um, essentially spend karma whenever you uh, want, and uh, you use the same. Uh, system that we talked about beforehand. I think our um, toughness, like uh, the body attribute, was pretty much okay. The one thing that we could either increase is we could go more for intelligence and uh, aim to purchase better drones. Uh, that, I guess, is an option, but we don't even have a second drone, let alone a class B drone. So. Um, the other option is going for quickness um, and essentially uh, upgrading quickness and maybe rifles at the same time to make us a bit more useful in uh, the firefights. We could also then increase dodge. Um, it's a difficult decision. I think I want to explore the good drones first. So we're going with intelligence and I'll then upgrade uh, the drones. Um, but as you can see, it, it'll take some time. Okay, we're making our way to the mistress. And essentially, Duncan and I are now about to meet kindly Chang. She's a special character because uh, the way that she's being introduced is she's uh, like this really rough and successful businesswoman uh, working with the triads. She exactly knows what's going on and she's super pissed about um, her favorite uh, runner, one of her favorite runners, Nightclaw, uh, the, the troll that had been killed dying. Um, the uh, the uh, game is a lot about like uh, respect, so you will um, you will see that if you are honest with her and uh, talk uh, respectful to her, she's essentially um, also respectful with uh, with you. I've tried my first playthrough a couple of times. Uh, the options that were not so respectful didn't particularly work out um, super well. Good. Duncan, our friend, uh, is still um, pretty obsessed with the entire situation. At the end, both of us are now um, placed on a shit list and are essentially left out to, um, to be hunted. So we want to lose our SIN. Uh, the SIN is the uh, unique identifier number. Um, that uh, is basically a social uh, security number, but in a more extreme fashion. She can help us with that, but it is always a favor uh, for a favor. So Auntie is going to ask, uh, ask us to deliver a message. Thanks for the favor, Auntie. And she has uh, one of her um, one of her runners is acting up quite a bit, so she needs to remind him about his place. Uh, before we do that, though, um, before we do that, though, oh no, we can't get, uh, we cannot get uh, to our uh, bunk beds yet. So this will be where we're living on the ship. Um, essentially, we need to go to the mission first. Not much has happened. I mean, we also don't have a lot of uh, Nguyen. We have four karma points. Just received three, uh, basically, for the dialogue. But that's not enough to upgrade drones. And we only have 1,200, so uh, that's, not even, that's not even cutting it. Uh, 
Good. So now what you can see is uh, Duncan and I need to attend this mission and uh, there are a couple of other options that we can select. Later there is a bigger pool of runners. Uh, for now we're taking what we can get and I think a little bit healing as well as support magic is the right choice. So Gobbit is going to um, attend uh, the run together with us, um, giving us a pretty well-rounded team. Let's go guys. Let's go. All right, time for us to equip ourselves. Sparklight, uh, we don't have any uh, reserve gear, so it's just going to be our two medkits. You know what? Uh, we can put this one here into our stack. Uh, we don't need any drugs. And I'm almost positive that we're also not going to use the grenade. Uh, that gives us a couple of open spots once we need them. Plus, I can sell uh, this for Nguyen. I told you that the game is pretty sparse when it comes to uh, to any sorts of funds so we need to be really really uh, strategic about what we're uh, purchasing good we're not using our karma instead we are uh, going to go and deliver the message perfect our objective is to explore the district here. If, uh, what was the name of the district? Um, the Wallet City, also known as the District of Darkness. And the first person that we're going to meet is this bloodied uh, woman, who in reality is a researcher. And she's not only uh, any researcher, she has lost most of her um, family and is now researching Feng Shui uh, and asked us to please repair the city. Her theory, and that's becoming more important later down um, in the actual uh, gameplay, her theory is uh, that the city essentially um, kind of bleeds out and that there is a very negative karma here. Um, so... Yeah, that's the first indication of a lot of the story that's going to happen later. All right, we're moving in and really some of the minor things that we need to do is simply repairing the city. Um, uh, this is the first repair point where we are uh, repairing a couple of like wires uh, that are hanging out. I was, when I first played uh, the quest, I wasn't like 100% um, convinced what they are actually doing. Uh, no, we're, we're fine. We don't need to sell anything. I wasn't 100% convinced what they are doing because uh, you can't fix the karma or the Feng Shui of an entire city block just by repairing a couple of wires. But I guess it's an, it's an interesting concept. There we go. Since we do have someone with astral um, side, astral side is kind of the mage side where you can see spirits. Um, Gobbit, our uh, uh, red shaman, uh, could uh, see this formless uh, spirit, a uh, man who had been pretty much tortured by the thug that we're going to uh, see very soon. Um, He tells us about 5465, which is the secret um, entrance uh, code and the secret uh, passageway because we're just going through here, heads on. Uh, it's not going to work very well. Um, we will get extra karma if we're not killing anyone um, because all of these are essentially working for our... Um, uh, for our... Um, Johnson, um, she has mentioned that she doesn't want to to get them into trouble, so uh, we could just shoot our way through all of this, or we're taking a more moderate approach.
We need to uh, put out the tires soon, but we will need sand for that. So that's the second um, uh, the second repair of the city. There is the bucket of sand. And this is where we repair it. Very good. Two repairs done. And we can try to help this old uh, man here. Uh, we basically need to get uh, an amicable solution with the guy who has just beaten him to the ground. Last time I straight up killed him and unfortunately lost the side quest. So let's see if I can find a better solution. Uh, this time this is the thug who bullied the old man. Oh no, I don't want to kick his face. <sighs> Damn it! We can't get Strengths 4 real quick. We can't get Etiquette Shadowrunner real quick. That would be a uh, that would be hilarious if we just barely get the skill. And I don't want to attack him. God damn it. Um, so let's see if we can simply run away. All right, he's following us. And I hope that we can simply leave the area. Oh come on, don't don't make me kill him. Oh, that would suck. I wanted to solve the side quest. Alright, you're telling me that I can't leave the area, seriously? Oh Isis. That is indeed lame. Is there a way, let me think, is there a way to just subdue him? Uh, maybe we can stun him. Alright, if we just hit him... Ouch. Well, that stinks. Um, luckily, we can heal ourselves. So as long as he just shoots once, we can uh, kind of get away with it. Um, all right, he's stunned. Now, let's... Perfect. I think we have not violated our code. Do not kill any uh, yellow lotus. Yep. Okay. All right. Good. Cool. Um, we picked up the item. And he hopefully learned his lesson not to fuck around with us. Good, we completed all of the repairs and now finally got five Karma, uh, which means we can upgrade our drones. Not that it uh, matters a lot because we still uh, don't even have our second drone, but we are now ready to equip uh, grade A drones, which is pretty damn cool. Um, I think we should uh, then probably also go for Yeah, we should continue going for more AP. I mean, plus one AP per, per each drone is awesome. And the Class S drones are really, really good. 
so yeah, we're probably going for seven drones first. Um, and let's also skill at least some points into ranged combat. I think we are at a good break point with the drones. Maybe getting this extra armor. And then afterwards, I would probably go for ranged combat four. Rifles three, quickness uh, four, dodge four, just so that we send um, that we carry our own weight in the actual combats. All right, so. Um, I think that was... God damn it. All right, I think it was... A four, six, five? Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, we, we don't have a decker with us, so we can't really hack them. Damn it, we cannot yet get there. Let's inspect uh, what else we could do. Yeah, that's uh, that's the one that we needed. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I remember. Um, so this is uh, Bao's uh, den. That's uh, the location that we needed to get into. I don't 100% remember if I did this one the last time. And unfortunately, we can't get in at the moment. Let's control our drone and finally start some combat. We are completely in the open. And it's a perfect moment to start messing around with these hellhounds. There we go. By the way, I should have uh, given Duncan accurate, uh, Duncan and Sparklight accuracy beforehand. It's a bit late now, but better late than never. Moving to cover. Yeah, it's still in medium cover. We can hit it next turn, I suppose. Oh, nice. We could summon a spirit here, which I did not do. So we're going to do that next turn. Uh, some of the places, for instance, the one that you see here, uh, offer you to actually summon a spirit. Uh, mm, so that would be one of those ghosts that help us. Unfortunately, all of our 60% shots are just missing, which is a shame. Yeah, we don't have enough uh, action points to summon, uh, to move there and summon the spirit. So let's just move closer. We can still summon the spirit next turn. Taking a couple of shots. Moving, exposing ourselves, but putting uh, the Hellhound into a flanking position. I want to make sure that we can kill it before, yeah, before it starts getting ugly. 
Uh, the breath of the hellhound deals damage over time and that's very difficult to heal because it deals a small amount of damage but very often good so we made entrance to the lotus den and this here will lead us right into the middle of uh, all of the gangers we're now inside of the building without having killed anyone that's perfect Good, we got uh, Strangler Bao here, who's our contact person, and he's a beauty, uh, a street samurai himself. He's of the opinion uh, that basically, um, that basically he can run his own uh, show, and this is really a cool scene where she basically uh, she says, "Mr. Bao, as you already know, I'm a, a, you're a man of swift action. I respect that." Um, I will get right to the point um, and she basically sells, uh, tells him that she has a dark secret and she's willing to share that with the triads uh, so that he's going to die and she expects him to um, to be uh, to meet her uh, right uh, the next morning and uh, she basically tells him that she owns him from now on forward which is which was an interesting uh, power dynamic, so she clearly knows what she's doing. By moving through the Lotus here, there are a few things like Sim Sim chips that you can steal. Most of that um, adds some extra, uh, some extra uh, Nguyen that you can get on the black market. And since we're strapped for money, uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. I wasn't 100% sure how to open the lock. I don't remember that. All right, so this here should not cause problems. There we go. Couple of extra Nguyen, which is the official currency. Funny if you think about it, the game has been written in the 80s and Japan was like a huge economical uh, powerhouse during that time. So the game assumes that everyone speaks Japanese, or that it's a world language, <clears throat> and that the new yen, so and the new uh, Japanese currency is kind of the hard dollar of the world. Um, in reality, as it has developed quite uh, differently as Japan had been plagued by an economical depression and an overaged population, but that's a different topic for probably another video. Good, we got um, a weapons dealer here and that's all uh, fine and good. Um, I'm not sure if this is the best price that we could get, to be honest. I hold on to the items and we're selling it um, we're selling it to someone else. It seems that this guy is giving us a bad price, but I might just overestimate how much a grenade is worth when we're selling it. Good. Let's double check. I think... I think we've almost done all of the things. The only topic that we, uh, or the only quest that we haven't resolved fully, or we have resolved it, but we haven't spoken with the quest NPC, was the one right here. Yeah, but we already got our karma for it, so I guess bad luck.
Good. That was our first run. Not very threatening so far, but we were also put onto a mission where we're not uh, supposed to kill everything. And as much as I like to kill everything, uh, it was beneficial to not do so. All right, so we are already up to seven karma, which is phenomenal. Now, the only thing that we need to do is go back to our auntie. Good. So now a couple of things happen. Number one, this is a video of our stepfather um, Raymond, and it's appar apparently of very bad quality, but it shows how he's supposedly going to be gunned down. So, um, Auntie. Um, has organized uh, that video and it gives us a first impression that maybe Raymond is dead um, or that he's probably dead. Uh, the second thing that happened is we now officially lost our sins so we are now sinless aka criminals and we are going to go into our new hideout which is the safe boat. There are plenty of uh, dialogue options and I encourage you if you play the game to really like go uh, through each of them. The characters are uh, very well written in, uh, in my perspective so they all have their own individual motivation really. Um, let's talk shortly about uh, the core here. We do have our mission computer which very soon we're going to use in order to acquire more runs. We do have our stash where we're putting all of the items that we don't need and we got our bunk beds uh, which refills kind of all of the resources um, in between uh, the missions. So we get this distorted dream. Um, we had a really, really uh, rough night where we were dreaming of like this being with a thousand teeth, um, and we uh, we find out that um, that we're not the only uh, one who had this dream. Duncan actually had the same one. And I think we're almost fully initiated as runners. Oh, yeah, that dialogue was also great. So, Auntie is still looking uh, for reason why we had been attacked by the local police um, at the harbor. And they basically found this young police officer <clears throat> who uh, was trying to hunt down uh, Duncan and myself overnight. Uh, they ba uh, beat him up quite... Um, quite handily and he basically said that the orders to hunt them came from very very far up and uh, not only d does he lose his life because he was stupid enough to go here without telling anyone greed gets you always killed guys so he was learning that 
uh, right away. Um, anyway, it's not only did he learn that he shouldn't have gone here alone. Um, we also learned that there's apparently a pretty powerful person who wants uh, no loose ends. So Duncan and I um, um, are in a troublesome situation. So we make the deal with um, Auntie and uh, she will help us to find out who killed Raymond, our uh, stepfather. And we help her with a couple of runs. Uh, clearly, Duncan, our cop friend, isn't uh, too happy about the situation. But after a lot of, um, re again, really good dialogue, um, not only Duncan is called uh, Gun Show, uh, because he's the street samurai. Um, but we also find our nickname, we're now Sparklight, and officially initiated. Perfect, so we're, we've made it uh, to become runners. And here's the first thing that uh, we can now do, because we'll become the team lead, we can level up our companions. We do have three of them. Uh, Gobbit, the Red Chairman, which you already met, uh, Isabel, our Decker, and Duncan, uh, security specialist. Yeah, he's he's effectively a street samurai. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the skills here. Gobbit has the option between augmenting her ranged combat, which uh, theoretically is good, but unfortunately she has taken small machine guns, which unlike the actual Shadowrun, uh, where small machine guns are really, really good, uh, they are a bit meh in this game, so I wouldn't really go into that. Uh, the other one is Spirit Control, um, uh, giving you the option Spirits never break away in the first two rounds after summoning. That's cool, um, because it means you get two rounds of Spirits, um, and Spirits are strong if you can uh, if you can summon them. As for her, um, she has... Um, the op uh, we have the option, she's a combat decker, so she has real-world skills. All of the upper uh, ones are real-world skills, the lower ones are decking skills. Last time I went for the decking skills and realized, mm, you know what, I don't need all of these extra programs. This here is a uh, uh, program which deals AoE damage to multiple enemies. I've probably used it three times because it was more often beneficial to single target nuke. On the other hand, the mini um, grenade launcher that she has is excellent. So I'm going to look forward upgrading it uh, this time. It says augment uh, the mini launcher. Um, let's see how this augmentation is going to look like. Um, for Duncan, um, we have the option to either get under slug, which is, uh, which is a, a control ability. It just takes two AP away from an enemy, but has a moderate chance to hit. The other one is firepower. Dung gains an assault rifle ability that fires a single shot of uh, incendiary ammunition, does additional two damage, and pierces up to two um, armor. I like that one. Um, I was okay with crowd control as well. Uh, it turned out in later stages of the game it wasn't uh, so hot. So maybe um, the ammunition is better. Um, an advantage of a re uh, replay is or if a second playthrough is you can try something new, kind of without jeopardizing uh, the the core uh, the core features of uh, the game. I I will stick to the things that have worked. So now we're uh, since we're the boss, we're uh, checking our um, inbox, and there are a couple of really good uh, reads. Some of them are more um, I would say tutorials. Uh, others, uh, like this one here, the Serial Killer, uh, are uh, a run that has been offered to us. Another one is the Mr. Drake run. Oh, that's a good one. I'm looking forward for it. And another one is a Sabotage run. So we got a few jobs uh, available. You can now see we have Artifact Liberation, Serial Killer, and Geomantic Sabotage. Uh, these are the ones that uh, that uh, that we can um, uh, take. And here on the Shadowland uh, billboard, uh, so to speak, we could uh, post whenever we get extra data. 
uh, from the run um, to make a couple of extra nuyen. So, the last minutes of this video are going to be used to um, uh, to spend our resources wisely. Let's start with the karma. Uh, we talked about how we wanted to either upgrade uh, the drones. I mean, drone five is pretty good. Uh, the other alternative is making gun uh, making the rifle fights a bit better. I think we're going with uh, drone five here. And let's upgrade rifles to two. That's fine. We're now getting the burst fire ability soon, automatic fire ability with rifles. So let's, okay. In terms of merchants, one of the things that I did not necessarily appreciate all too much was the placement of all of the merchants. They were really all over the place. So I. I, one of the most uh, liked mods for this uh, game is basically a single merchant uh, uh, place where you go and all of the merchants are there. Um, so this one here is the merchant for all of the drones. And for 2000, we're getting, we're getting a nice uh, M model MK2 drone. So let's take a look at the drone. So there are a couple of drone repair kits. Yeah, that's all fine and good. And what are the options here? So support room that is equipped to lay smoke. That's probably not what we need. Doberman, that's the one that we already have. It's a turret that can be modified with um, burst fire for short range uh, skirmishes. Robodog, a medicator on wheels, runner's best friend in the heat. Uh, that sounds almost intriguing to, to have a drone that can heal. Uh, mobile pharmacy, okay, so that's uh, the exact same drone. And then we do have a few Strato, a Lone Star hover drone that has been given close range weapons. That's the assault, uh, so it's a shotgun drone. Then we do have uh, long-range uh, weapons as a sniper drone and a semi semi-automatic turret. Hmm. I have no idea because I've never used uh, drones before. But since we do have two thousand nuyen, and by the way, the prices uh, that the other guy offered us were okay. We just sold uh, the spare consumables and have now 2,200 nuyen. Ah, it's a difficult, it's more difficult than you might think because I don't want to buy anything that's crap, uh, which we're then afterwards not going to use. I like the idea of more DPS through the drones. I do not see the drones to be like highly support uh, drones at the moment. We do have our uh, caster for that. So we might want to go with the sniper, to be honest. Or the semi-automatic uh, drone. Um, I wish they had a better overview of what the drone is actually doing. Hmm. We'll take the sniper one. Good. My question is, can you equip them with different guns? That's one of the most fun uh, fun things um, in the actual Shadowrun game. Because if you actually play a rigger, uh, you can absolutely modify your drones. And it is hilarious. All right, we're poor again, spending all of our money on drones. It seems that there is no way to really upgrade uh, them. 
Um, I mean, it's called Mark II, so I assume that's the second version of the drones. I'll read up uh, on the drones in between now and the next time that uh, that I play, so the next episode. Uh, we have spent our karma, we have spent um, all of the money on a single drone. Hopefully that was a worthwhile decision uh, investment. Uh, we soon want, now that we do have two drones, for now we're going to stick with them and uh, the next a uh, few items that I want to invest in is cyberware because there's really a lot of good cyberware and it's kind of a no-brainer to to actually go for a cyberware. So we're we're going to um, to invest in that and we're ending on our typical um, uh, platform for our next mission where we're going to take out uh, take on our next run. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this was the second episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. I hope you enjoyed it, and we're going to see each other in the next episode. Take care, and bye-bye.